uh, welcome to this live stream, uh, day 40 of uh, the 90 day challenge. And uh, I'm John Alfredson and I'm here with Stephanie Homeyer. Hey uh, everyone. And uh, we're gonna answer questions. We're gonna have a Q and A today. So whatever questions you might have around Shopify or Facebook or setting up ads or setting up your store or whatever it might be, uh, just post them in the, on this video and we will answer them as to the best of our abilities. Yes. Um, so if you don't know who we are, I'm uh, one of Techademic's uh, trainers in the Entrepreneur Program and the Ecom Incubator Program and also a Tech Week instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been uh, training people with Shopify for, for about, yeah, for the last six months mm -hmm. here at Techademic. Mm -hmm. And um, I have my own Shopify store. I launched that store 16 months ago, approximately. And it has generated 650,000 in revenue so far. So, so it's been going pretty well. Uh, if you don't know my story, I started, I started out back in November of 2015, and uh, I launched my store on a Monday. I got two sales the first day for my for my Facebook ads. I had taken a course. It took me two weeks to set up the store and get started from that course, and then got two sales the first day when I launched my ads. And then just escalated from there. I found a winning product very quickly, so I got into th uh, almost a thousand orders my first week. So it was a little overwhelming actually because I wasn't prepared for that. So <laughs> I had to take a break and uh, basically pause my ads to find find uh, virtual assistants, and uh, and uh, I did, and then I then just went on from that. So that well, it's been going up and up and up since then. Okay. And uh, Stephanie. Yeah, and I'm Stephanie Homer. I, I work here at the Techademics headquarters. I've been with the company since well, the beginning, so about a year ago. And I've been in e-commerce for about five years now and been working with Chris as well as other mentors like John Alfredson here and help us support it, our uh, e-com department. So it um, looks like we've got a couple of questions coming in here now. Um, you guys can just keep posting and we'll answer as we go along. Let's see, we've got Flippin jo Johansson. Philip Johansson? Mm -hmm. Philip Johansson, yep. yep. What do you think about making a store for a specific country uh, with that language? Uh, my opinion for that is uh, absolutely. If you have a, if you have a, a, a product or, or an audience that is very country specific, if you can go worldwide or if you can't ship worldwide, then go, go, definitely go for your country and for your language. But if you can do it worldwide, I would recommend that because you have a much broader audience if you can ship worldwide. And you can if you're doing drop shipping from China, uh, for example, you can go to any. But uh, so what you can do also is you can also do install uh, apps that have multiple, so that, that can basically determine where, where the visitor is coming from and, and basically change the language based on where they are at. So. All right, and then Mako. Um, yes, there will be an international training here soon. Um, at this time, we don't have an extra additional no, training no. for any international, but we will be working on that for all of our international folks. Yeah. Who else is joining us today? Yeah, we've got 28 people on so far, as I can see. <laughs> so any questions? We're, we're, at, we're having a Q&A, so any questions related to Shopify? Uh, or uh, Facebook advertising, whatever you might have, we will ask, answer them as much to, to the best of our abilities. And yeah, how do you guys know if it, if it is a winning product, and how many sales m must I have after four days? A good average, uh, please. Thanks. Okay, Jess, um, a winning product. I mean, I, I, you don't know from the beginning when you start if you have a winning product or not. I mean, you might have done research to find out that this is a product that is selling for others, for other stores. So you take one of those that have a lot of sales or that you've been selling, that you've been seen promoted on Facebook and other from other stores, and then start promoting for yourself. If, you, if you're making one sale within your first three or four days with a $5 ad, that's a good, I mean, good start. If you don't make any sales within three or four days, definitely pause your ads. But uh, then there is something a disconnect between the audience or or the product. They they might not like the product, or the audience might be off for that particular product. Mm -hmm. So, but if you are making one sale or more than one sale, definitely it's it's a uh, it's a good sign. But then you want to look for consistency so that you, that you get consistent sales on a daily or maybe every other day 
for on a five dollar budget. So if you can get that for a for a week or or more, so that you can get up up to ten sales, fifteen, twenty sales, then it's uh, then you probably have a winner if you can if you can get those sales relatively cheap. So then it's time to think about scaling. I think mm -hmm. that's my Absolutely. opinion. Absolutely, I completely agree with you. So we do notice that there's a lot more people joining us. And so today we're actually just doing some Q&A on Shopify and how we can really help you guys, whether it be in your settings or adding products into your stores, themes, anything in regards to Shopify, um, really put your plug in your questions here in the comment section and John and I will uh, go through and answer each one of them. Let's see. So this one right here was the number one tip for building a long-term brand with AliExpress in dropshipping. Long-term to build a brand, I would uh, well with AliExpress, I would first look for winning, find to find winning products to see what's uh, to actually learn how to sell uh, so that I can make consistent sales of a product. And if I if I find a winning product in in my niche uh, or when I do, I should say, then basically after a while, after I sold maybe. 20, 40, 50, or, or even more of that, I, I start looking to contact my supplier in AliExpress and see if they are, first of all, if they're well, willing to negotiate price with me so that I can get a lower price, but also if they have the ability to do custom, maybe custom make these uh, these items so that it can, I can put my brand name on them so that I can stand out basically from the competition, and basically private label them. That's how I would do with AliExpress long term to build a brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, yeah, reach out to to your suppliers on AliExpress and, and see if they are if they have contact. A lot of them have contact with manufacturers or, or factories. They have factories themselves, so they cannot most a lot of times accommodate your requests. And Michelle, when uh, when scaling, what's the best way to scale? Is it based on age or gender, and do we automatically scale after one sale? Um, you're really going to want to look for a little more proof than just one sale. Um, one sale is a really great start. Um, my recommendation would be definitely more than 25. Um, just start to really scale it up. Um, and yeah. you can scale it up more based on not just the age and gender, but also on countries and interests. John, do you want to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, well, Stephanie said you want more, definitely more than one sale because one sale can just be a fluke that you got lucky and got the sale after the first day. But you want to see consistent sales on a day by day basis. And when you do that and we got up to 20, 25 sales, definitely, you know, you have a winner and uh, you can start scaling out and, and not just age and gender. You can scale also out by by a phone device they're using. If they're on iPhone or Android, you can basically split that up and then you can create custom audiences, which is a little bit more advanced. But custom audiences, basically, you can put all the people that have visited your, the product page in, in a one, into one audience and then, uh, uh, well, in, in your Facebook ads account, and then you can advertise to that. But more importantly, when you have enough people in that audience, you can create a lookalike audience. And uh, a lookalike audience is an audience, basically, of people that Facebook put, put together that is very similar to the people that have visited your, your page. So if you have a thousand people that have visited your product page, and you create a lookalike audience based on that, Facebook will put together an audience of millions of people that are very similar to those people in, in their demographic and their behavior and their interests and stuff like that. So they're more, very, they're more likely to, to buy your product as well than, than the general population. So that's what I would recommend how to scale out. That's a very, very short answer to a, to a big question, but <laughs> there are many ways you can scale out. Mm -hmm. And this one right here, we've got, um, what do you think about doing worldwide targeting for a PPP ad and get to, ad to get lots of cheap likes and social proof after that to create a view content ad only for US? Do you have any? So yeah, worldwide targeting is, is great for social proof. Um, it really helps you to see what the other countries are now. Um, from my understanding, with the new worldwide feature, U.S. is not is not included in that. What I've seen It's not okay. I haven't I haven't used I the haven't worldwide used feature. I haven't checked mm -hmm. that actually, but I I wouldn't use a, a worldwide feature actually to start with my PPE ads. You can do that, yes, and you can get very cheap likes, yes. Mm -hmm. But also, all the likes that you're getting, are, uh, most of the likes that you're getting are going to get come from countries where you which you're not which you're not selling to most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, there are countries with very very bad postal service that so you, you can't rely on the tracking of packages 
getting to their destination, and uh, they're also having a lot of credit card fraud and things like that. So you don't want to ship worldwide all your products. So also don't do the PPE ad to all of those countries because th that will also build up your Facebook pixel data based on the people that are liking your ad. So if you have a lot of people liking your ad from countries that you don't ship to, they're most likely not also the buyers, they're going to be buyers later. Or So if, if you're creating lookalike audiences later on based on the people that have, have liked your, your page posts, for example, is that audience is going to be based on those uh, people in the, uh, those other countries, and that's maybe not the best idea. So I would suggest that you create a PPE ad to the countries that you ship to. And only include the countries that you ship to. So if you ship to U.S., Canada, United, uh, United Kingdom, mm -hmm. Australia, New Zealand, and maybe some Western European countries to start with, that's where I would start to to create my PPE ad around those. You can do it worldwide, and you can get it cheaper. It will be definitely cheaper to do it worldwide, but also you don't just want the likes. You also want the data on the pixel from those yeah. people that are liking. You want to know what age group they are, the people that are liking, and and things like that. So, yeah. Absolutely. Great point. So in that, you can also exclude the countries or only target the countries that you're going to be marketing to, that you can ship to. Um, the next one is, um, will you please talk about the matrices uh, you watch for and what type of numbers you want to see to determine a promising campaign versus one that is underperforming? Okay. Would you like to talk about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the metrics I look for, uh, we're, now we're talking about conversion campaigns with a, a, a yeah, website conversion objective. Uh, the numbers I look for, or the metrics I look for is the click-through rate first and the cost per click. Uh, so I look if the click-through rate is, and the click-through, there are several different metrics for the click-through rate, but the click-through rate for all is what I'm looking for first and foremost, and that is uh, basically counts all the clicks on your ad, on the clicks on the like button, the clicks on the comment uh, link and uh, also the clicks to just open up your image or whatever so it doesn't just it's not just click on the link but um, um, that's the first thing I look for and about well I, if the click-through rate for all is over two percent it is okay uh, in my opinion and uh, if it's around five it's it's good and it's over five it's good and if you get over ten then it's really good in my opinion so you should strive to get it over five and uh, yeah, the click-through rate, that's the first. And if it's not, well, if, it, if it's not over five, at least it should be over two after a, uh, after a few days. If it's not over 2% after two or three days, if you run your ad, mm -hmm. you, there's definitely something wrong, something missing with, with your target audience or the product. So then you, I suggest that you pause your ad and look at, take a look at the, the audience you're targeting or look at the product. Maybe you need to change some, something there. Mm -hmm. The next one is uh, yeah, I think that one. I think you you pretty much just covered what Christopher asked, which is you know he wanted he's run um, some PPP ads for three days for to boost the engagement. So um, with four different types of products and not getting much engagement. And so the question is, is should he rerun the ad and target different audiences, build engagement, and then run a conversion ad? And I mean, in my opinion, Christopher, what I have seen is yes. I mean. There's going to be several different areas that you want to look at when running an ad. It could be the image, it could be your ad copy, it can be your targeting, and it can be your price. So you want to look at all of those aspects before changing every single thing. Maybe change one thing. Um, if you're not getting much engagement, it could be what you say in the in the ad copy, and it could be the targeted audience as well. So um, you know, I would definitely look at all of those and see where where you can make some changes um, and then just run another PPP ad um, and then as you start to see a lot of those engagements um, and comments shares you really uh, then you can start to do uh, more of a conversion ad when you know that that is your uh, a great product it's going to sell um, and then also I would recommend um, adding in some take action words um, you know whether it's like tag share um, typically tag and share are the most commonly used ones um, that will help increase your engagements as well and you also can uh, add some scarcity into your ad that'll help people take the action as well that will help you to want to um, change over into a conversion ad yeah 
And also, one thing you want to consider as well is the image in your ad. Is, mm -hmm. is that good enough? Is it standing out? Because the image is, makes up like 90, 80, 90% of, mm -hmm. of uh, the whole ad and, and uh, affects, has a big impact on the interaction engagement. So if you have a great image, you get, it's more, you're more likely to get, get good engagement. So mm -hmm. that's also my, something you might test. So a lot of people are talking about testing, changing different ad copy and things like that, but also the image is also very important. So it needs to be a clear, crisp image, in my opinion. Of the product, um, or have another, or, or someone using the product is even better. If you have a person in there, it will uh, get more engagement Absolutely. most of the time. I mean, that kind of goes back to our conversation that we had earlier today. Um, you know, I, in an ad that we were reviewing, and I had one that had just white background, and it did better than one that I did with the exact same image, just doing a, a, a short little video. And the one that had just a white background, it worked. It was appealing. And so you, you, you don't know until you test. And so I think that's really the key here is just continuously testing and seeing um, what works and what's not working. Yeah. Um, let's see. So to scale to other countries, do you need any licenses? Uh, that's something you need to, to depending on what you're selling, uh, I mean, um, I, I can't give any advice on that, but I've sold to a lot of different countries. So um, I can't really give an advice on, on uh, it's all depending on what you're selling and uh, what's what's uh, allowed to sell in those countries, with the countries that you intend to sell in. So you need to look it up with those countries. But I've sold to a lot of countries, uh, uh, the, the big five, like United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and United Kingdom. But also, I've sold to Western European countries uh, a lot of products, and uh, yeah, you can definitely do that. But you need to look it up first. Make sure that you're not selling something that is forbidden in that country or something like that. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's take another question here. Um, those of you that are just joining us as well, um, I continue to see the numbers going up, and yeah. so we're here today live in the 90 day e-com challenge answering your questions um, on Shopify so please go ahead and comment below with your questions and John and I will be answering those um, any app in Shopify free or paid that can help in SEO or John are you familiar with any apps for SEO in Shopify no I don't well there are apps absolutely uh, but uh, I don't think in the beginning when you're starting out at least you don't need a lot of SEO to focus a lot on SEO the the thing that the SEO that you can type in the at the bottom of the product descriptions that are basically the, the only thing you need to get started uh, so when you're when you're adding a product in your store in the that product uh, settings basically at the bottom of that you have you have a, a little box for SEO settings where you can uh, type the title in for SEO and, and uh, description and things like that and that's the only thing you need to get started and then later on when you're making sales absolutely start focusing on SEO as well but the focus in the beginning should 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 be on making sales and if you're making a lot of sales already there are absolutely apps that you can install but I don't have any one in particular that I will recommend here right now mm -hmm. so I think this next question really um, comes up a lot uh, in regards to a general store if somebody has four to five niches and they have one pixel install wouldn't that confuse the pixel if they're running ads in three to, or two to three different niches? <clears throat> so if they're running like a kitchen niche or a golf niche and then teachers or police officers, is that going to c confuse the pixel in order to give them the proper data that they need to have a successful uh, winning well, products? Yeah, and my take on it is uh, it might affect a little bit to have multiple niches, but it, but it will still work because I have a general store. I have multiple niches in my store, and uh, I have a, my Pixel haven't had a problem with with uh, optimizing for sales in my, in all those niches with no problem. So I'm making a lot of sales in all those niches and uh, with only one Pixel. So. It definitely works. How much it will affect, I mean, I don't know uh, because I haven't tested with multiple pixels. But uh, I say that's definitely working. I mean, the pixel is picking up data from from all of your visitors on your site. And when you start launching an ad campaign for a specific product or specific niche, it also picks up what are the p uh, preferred buyers for that particular product for that particular niche. And then it will build up data for just that particular campaign when it's optimizing. So. 
as soon as you're getting some traffic to that product, then you will also start um, seeing sales in that uh, because Facebook starts learning that for this product, we're going to optimize for these type of buyers. For this other product, which is in another niche, the, the pixel will learn how to optimize for buyers to find, find buyers in that niche. So that's, I think, what, what's how it works for me and, and why it's been working well for me. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. That's very helpful. Um, how many ads do you test for a product? If all PPP ads have good engagements, like do you run a website conversion ad for all of them? And what is the ads perform? What if the ads perform well in a PPP, but no results in a conversion? Do you wait three days or kill it after the kill it in the first day? Yeah. Well, what? what well, I think that, I mean, in my experience that, um, you know, I you can test multiple products. I've tested several products and you, not being attached to the actual product and just see if it goes. If you get a lot of engagement, my rule that I follow, not everybody follows this one and that's okay, um, is 10%. So if I've got, you know, 100 likes, I want to see like 10 sales. So... That's where that's kind of how I gauge it, um, and then run a website conversion ad, and then you can start. With, if you've got a season pixel, then you can start with a purchase um, ad, a purchase conversion ad, or even doing a um, add to cart. Hmm. And so that's kind of where I start at. And I mean, with as seasoned as the pixel is that I have on my store, I kind of kill it within like 48 to 72 hours. Um, you really want to give Facebook enough time to give you back the data and um, to, to see if it's even going to scale, whether it be... Yeah, absolutely. But the, the goal for, for you all should be that after... And the PPE campaign is... It, the purpose of the PPE can, can, yep. campaign is to build up the engagement. It's not The purpose is not to make sales. You, yes, you will make sales as well occasionally, mm -hmm. and but you will not make as many sales that it, when you're using the... The conversion objective, website conversion objective. That's the foc the, the focus for that one is getting the visitors to click on the link. Or, or if you're choosing view content as the objective, or if you're choosing purchase as the objective, then the, the focus will be to get as many sales as possible. Right. So you should start switching over to website conversion as the objective uh, as soon as you have it. You think that well, you start getting engagement and and uh, you can run the engagement ad for a while, but you're not going to run the PPE ad long term in my opinion right. you you turn it off after a while because you have when you have enough engagement mm -hmm. and then you focus on the conversion ads because the conversion ads is one are the ones that kind of make you the money so absolutely yeah so f and start start by focusing on view content if you haven't had many sales yet for the objective for the conversion ads view content and then uh, move on to add to cart later on when you've had some sales and then purchase as the objective when you've had a few sales i mean 10 20 sales maybe uh, of a particular product, then you can most likely switch over to purchase as the objective and, and have Facebook optimize because then Facebook knows a little bit about your buyers, how many uh, that you've had a few buyers, and, and uh, they can look at them and see, try to find similar people yeah. when, they're, when they're targeting, uh, when they're showing the ads to, to the audience. All right, that's great. Great stuff. So, um, and Cameron is asking about if. If they haven't had any sales, but they've got an email list of about 15 people, should they start to do some email campaigns to those 15 people? And if so, where what do they what do they say? I I wouldn't if they haven't had any sales yet. Yes, you can send out an email. Yes, but uh, my focus would be on just getting the sales first in the beginning when you are at that level, because you want to build up a, a eventually an email list of thousands of people. Uh, and uh, also remember when you're sending out emails to your list is that not all, not all, every, not everyone is going to open your email. Mm -hmm. So the email op average email open rate for for a newsletter from a from a store is uh, around 10 percent maybe. Mm -hmm. So so if you're sending out an email to 15 people, only one or two people are going to open that email. So it's not, is it worth your time? Well, it's up to you to decide it, depending on what you're selling. But uh, I would focus in the beginning more on. Uh, just uh, getting that, getting those sales first, and and while, while you're focusing on that, you're gonna build up your email list even more. So, and also to add on to that, if you've got say 15 people on an email list, if, are they coming through on an uh, email pop-up, or do you have a subscribe button? 
Um, if people are adding to cart, if you don't already have this, um, it would be my recommendation to have an abandoned cart app. Um, and that will automatically send them out a series of three emails. And that'll help you. I've, I've noticed when I have that going yeah. continuously, I've got sales coming through. That if they abandon cart, the uh, emails will actually bring them back in. So some people, you know, walk away from their computer or they got busy on their phone and they clicked off of it. The abandoned cart will just go right back to them and remind them, hey, I've got your, we've still got your stuff waiting here. So yeah. that could help you to get totally. some more sales as well. Yeah, and for me as well, in my, my store, mm -hmm. uh, the aban I, I used the app called Abandonment Protector. Mm -hmm. There are several apps that can recover carts, but uh, that's the one I use. And it sends out three emails. Uh, one, I send out one like 15 minutes after they abandon the cart, and then the second one I send out like five or six hours after, mm -hmm. and then the third one, 24 hours after. So um, I, the, car the app sends out those emails to the people that abandon carts, and it's, it's able to recover a, few, uh, a percentage of the people that are visiting into buyers by just doing that. And um, I, uh, last time I checked, the average, well, the, the card recovery app alone was responsible for about 10% of my revenue for any particular day. Mm -hmm. So it can be huge. I mean, if you're, you're increasing your sales by 10% by just having that app, and it's not, it doesn't cost much. It's a paid app, uh, that one that I'm using. It starts at $8 a month, but... But uh, definitely find an app that can do, a, yeah, re try to recover your abandoned carts. That's the, that's my, the most the income generating app that I have, I would say. I mean, it brings the most revenue so in my store. Okay, that's great. Um, and Bobby just said that, um, can you, he said that we need to speak a little bit, oh, she said we need to speak a little louder. Can you guys hear us okay? Everybody hearing us just fine? You're yeah. welcome, Cameron. Yeah, it's a little delay, so we can, do we have more questions? Yes, we do yeah, have so, more questions. So just wanna you, make sure they can yeah, all you, hear us. You can read your session closer, so. Okay. So we've got a couple of that one, we already answered that one. All right, yeah, we wanna get closer, they said. Mm -hmm. So, can you mix selling real estate and product to limit returned items? Um, real estate? Real estate, right here. Sell real estate and products on your Shopify store. I don't think you can, should yeah. look at, uh, sh I don't think you should sell real estate on your, or I mean, do any type of, I mean, if you can target real estate agents or something, if you have products that they would like, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you should go into the real estate market with your Shopify store, or n neither do I think that you should start selling affiliate, uh, well, start selling digital products as an affiliate on your Shopify store. That's that's uh, there are other solutions for that. I think you should focus on physical products in your Shopify store, physical products that can be shipped. So that's the, those yeah, those are the only products I recommend that you start selling in your store. Um, what products should be avoided if you want to limit returned items? Um, I can just speak from my own personal experience is electronics. Yeah. Um, that's one that um, when I first started out in e-commerce, I was like, yes, I'm going to give all the electronics stuff I got. Chargers and um, uh, the batteries, I got all kinds of stuff. And, yeah, no. Uh, I would definitely stay away from electronics um, and anything that's glass because um, if it's going to be shipped, uh, it could break during uh, sh delivery and uh, you don't want that to happen, so. No, uh, definitely, I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. And electronics is, it's, uh, can be very popular, but also it's very competitive in price pricing and you don't have a high margin if you're selling electronics usually. And uh, it breaks and then you have to handle a lot of returns. So try in the beginning when you're selling, try to avoid electronics. Maybe some very simple electronics could work, like for example, like, headphones or something like that is very simple, but don't, try, in, in general, try to stay away from electronics. Also, clothing, unless you're doing print on demand, mm -hmm. stay away from clothing in the beginning because the sizes that comes from China, if you're drop shipping, they're not the same sizes that, uh, as the US sizes and European sizes and you're gonna, hunt, yeah, they're gonna, people are gonna return it and they're gonna have a lot of customer support Absolutely. from that, so avoid that in the beginning, yeah. Absolutely. Um, We've got a, kind of a more along the lines of a statement, but um, 
you know, why spend over 400 only to get one sale and where is the problem? Um, I mean, just in <laughs> my own processes of going through Facebook ads, it's really all about reviewing your data and, and setting a budget. Yeah. Um, before you get to 400, if, if that's your daily budget, then okay. But when you're starting out, I would recommend starting out a little bit smaller, something like Chris teaches, something very, very simple as a $5 a day ad. And, and just testing it and seeing if, if $5 is, is too much, then go down to three. But really the purpose of it is, is to see if that's an actual winning product, if you're gonna get the engagement to scale it up, or if you need to move on and find another product. Yeah, you can't just put out, put out an ad and, on, on, a, on a daily budget and then just don't look at the results from that ad and, mm -hmm. and hope that it's gonna sell. Mm -hmm. uh, the important thing is to look at your data uh, I don't know what you have to be doing either, but when you're spending the $400, maybe you have tried a lot of different ads, but, mm -hmm. but look at the data from those ads because when you're, every time you're investing in an ad, you're buying data from Facebook. So mm -hmm. you can go ahead and look at that. Who are the people that are clicking? Who are the people that are, are liking the ad? Where are they coming from? What age group are they? Mm -hmm. So try to, there are, you can break that down in the ads manager to see exactly in your reports, uh, to see who the people are that are actually liking your ad. And if you have good enough click-through rates, like I said I, earlier in my question, over 2% click-through rate is what you should strive for at least. Uh, that's, the, that's the okay level. And above 2% is, uh, when you get up to 5, it's, it's, it's good and, and above. But um, if you look at those da that data and, and try to determine, maybe, maybe the, you're not targeting the right audience if you don't get the, the right response. Or maybe the product that you're trying to promote is not appealing enough. So. That there are a lot of different factors to, to take into account there, so we can't really tell you what's actually your specific problem, but that's where you should start looking for what, why you're not mm -hmm. selling. Yes, agreed. Um, Michelle has another question in regards to running a PPP and a website conversion both at $5 and got one sale, um, and should you leave both ads running to scale? And my first question would be, how long have you been running the ad? If it's one sale, for five dollars, or you, and you've been doing both of those. If it's five dollars for each one, or five dollars together, and you've gotten one sale, if that's in one day or three days, and then also again going back to what John said, um, reviewing the data and seeing where are those clicks coming from, um, how many clicks are you getting, as well as all of the engagement. So, hey, what's up, Robert? Hey, Robert. <laughs> And Elaine, great to see you guys on here. Thanks for being here. Jennifer has a question in regards to images in the store itself. Do you recommend just the product for the main image or with a background showing how the product looks while on a person? For example, jewelry, kitchen gadgets, um, cookie cutter, all those. So plain backgrounds, you know, that was something that we were just talking about too. Yeah, I mean, plain backgrounds, white backgrounds can work great if you have a if you have a very nice uh, picture of your. I mean, for ads, you can work really great for if you have a very nice picture, crisp, clear picture of your product. But also, if you have someone wearing your product, if you have jewelry selling jewelry, for example, if you have a picture of someone wear, wearing that jewelry, mm -hmm. uh, so that it, it awakes more emotion in the in the person that is looking at that, and and they can actually see themselves maybe wearing that. Yeah in a better way. So I definitely recommend having images where people are using that your product. Uh, that will only help you, I think, unless they are really bad quality, but as long as they're normal quality, absolutely. Absolutely, and, you, and with that too, um, even not just in the store, but when you're posting an ad, remember people are going to be going through their phones, thumbing through the phones, scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and your image has to be something that they're going to be like, oh wow, I gotta stop right here. Yep. Let me let me click on this. So if it's something that can invoke a, an emotion, then you're more likely gonna get some clicks, um, a lot more clicks actually. Um, or if it's a, an image that pops and grabs their attention, that's really what the purpose is of in the ad is. Hey, yeah. grab my attention. <laughs> yeah, we're doing interruption marketing yeah. because there are Absolutely. people that are surfing. They are in social mode. They want to read about, see what their friends are doing or, or whatnot. And, and then you're interrupting with an image that really stands out uh, on a sub, on, on related to something that they really enjoy, uh, their passion or whatever it might be. Then that's when they're going to stop and, and just look at it and then click on the ad. And, mm -hmm. and it's, a lot of times it's going to be impulse buys unless the, 
the price is really higher, then they might need to think about it. But if the price is uh, normal for the product, like under $50, there is usually a lot of impulse buys. Yep, absolutely. So um, we've got another question here. How to manage shipping costs to ship to many countries? And this is your specialty, John. <laughs> manage shipping costs to ship. So what I, do, what I do and what I recommend to the people that I teach to uh, Shopify to is that to have, um, if you can, have one shipping zone for all the countries that you ship to. Uh, if the shipping rates are not very different for a specific country, so if you're shipping drop shipping from China, m most of the time the shipping rates are going to be similar to to most uh, the top five countries and the Western European countries, for example, the ones that I ship to. So I have the same shipping rate for for all the countries, and uh, so I just set set it up the rates for all the all the I'm I'm doing weight based uh, shipping rates. Uh, the, the the shipping rates are based on the weight of the shopping cart, but I set it up and I add all the countries that I want into that shipping zone, and then. All the other countries that are not in the zone, they will. I will. Shopify won't even allow people from those countries to buy. That's how I set it up in a simple way. If you want, need to break it out, if some country has very different shipping rates or something, then you just create a separate shipping zone for that country. That's what I would recommend doing. You don't need to set one zone for every country. You can group them together. Yep. Absolutely. Is there what sort of a number do you find satisfactory for a cost per click? It's going to be yeah, so cost per click, there are, there, are, there are multiple ways to measure cost per click, but cost per click on the link is what we're looking for. So if you're looking in your Facebook ads reports, it's the cost per click on the link that we want to measure. And preferably it should be, well, we want it to be below 50 cents, but even under a dollar could be okay, and even higher than a dollar if you're making sales and if you're profitable. But, but try to get it as low as possible under a dollar and preferably under 50 cents because at least what I've seen in my store, a lot of the times, uh, my visit the visitors to my store correlates to one dollar, one dollar per visitor in sales. So if I have for one day, five hundred visitors to my store for one day, I usually have a five hundred dollars in sales. So if you have a hundred dollars visit, a hundred people visiting your store, you should approximately see hundred dollars in sales. So if you're doing things the way we're doing it, and uh, you, you might get a really high, you might have a higher margin if you're doing print on demand and things like that. But if you're drop shipping from China, that's a very common metric to have a one dollar per visitor. So if you're paying more more than that for your clicks, then then you're definitely losing money. And if you get it down to fifty cents, if you're paying fifty cents to get a visitor and you're making a dollar back, so then you're basically doubling your money back. And then of course you have other costs like cost of goods and. Uh, Maybe assistance and fees and stuff like that, but but if you get it down to fifty cents, you should be definitely be good and making a profit. And and between fifty cents and a dollar, you might make a profit. But over a dollar, you there then you need to really look at your numbers, how much you're spending and how much you're making to mm -hmm. to see if you're actually profitable. Yeah, that was a really great answer. Awesome. So if you get a hundred view contents, even if you're not getting any sales, do you go on to the next step and copy the ad to an ad to cart? Again. No sales. If they've not you get a hundred view contents, no, mm -hmm. no sales. Mm -hmm. So, if you get a hundred view contents, uh, you should definitely. Well, depending on the price point of your product, if you have a high, very high priced product, you might not even get a sale from a hundred visitors, even though, mm -hmm. even though it's it's a good match of of uh, audience and uh, product. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time, if you're starting out, if your if your price point is around maybe let's say twenty dollars, you should definitely. See, see a sale within 100 visitors if you're targeting the right people. Um, and uh, so that's probably the case. Then go, go ahead into your Shopify back office and see uh, the, uh, in your reports or your dashboard, uh, dashboard report, there, there you can see the conversion rate, how many people are actually adding the product to cart, and how many, many people initiate the checkout, and how many people are, uh, well, you haven't had anyone purchase, but if you have, if you are getting a hundred visitors and no one is adding to cart, then there, there is probably a a, a problem mm -hmm. with the with the product description or the price of the product. They, either the price is too high or there is something in the product description that are basically staring them, them away from buying or adding it to cart. And so start by looking there and then then go from there and see if if that's uh, if that's uh, if they're clicking basically and adding to cart. But they're and initiating checkout, but they're not buying. Then there's there might be the shipping rate that is too high, or 
something something else related to the it could some, be something else as well but but the, those are the most likely things to that you sh should look at look for first mm -hmm. awesome and hey Damon and hey Brandon Brandon saying what's up hey what's and, up and Darren hey guys and Elvira thank you all we're so glad you guys can hear us thank you all for being on today now, would you send people to a collection or a direct product? And in my experience, um, I have actually tested this, and sending them to a collection is not going to give you as much data that I have seen. Um, sending them directly to a product um, is going to give you a lot more data, as well as you're going to know whether that, pro that particular product is a winning product or not. Yep. When you send them to a collection, they may click on, you know, maybe you have five items in there, and you're not going to know exactly which one it is that you, you can scale up on that particular ad set. So sending them, my, my answer to that, Paul, would be to send them directly to the product. Would you? Yeah, I totally agree. You, you send them to the product, that will give you the best results. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. You guys have got some really great questions yeah, in here. I like your questions, too. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite theme on Shopify that is more efficient and user-friendly than, than another? Um, it depends on really if you're using a free theme or a paid theme. Um, for me, I, on the free themes, I particularly like um, the Brooklyn theme. I like it just because it's got the nice, big, bold banner up front. Um, there are a few other ones that I know. Um, minimal. Minimal, supply. Yeah, and supply. And also venture m might be good. Mm -hmm. there are, there are th those four are, the, are free themes. Uh, supply, minimum, minimal, Brooklyn, and venture. Uh, the ones I suggest check out, check out those check out those four and and pick one of those if you're if you don't have money to spend on a paid theme and I don't think you should spend money on a paid theme unless it's something very specific yeah. that you want so when you're starting out just go with a free theme absolutely okay so Luis asks is how long do you leave a website a conversion ad on Facebook to see good results um, again I'm just gonna go back over what Chris even teaches which is you want to look at it, you know, um, leave it on for about three days, uh, th even three to four days, just to make sure that you've got some good data, that you've got some engagement um, before moving on to the next process to either um, turn it off or scale it up. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Let, let it run for so that you get enough data. So if you're if you're running five dollar a day uh, ads, then then let them run for three or four days. So you can spend fifteen or twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. That's when you're gonna see. You also give to Facebook time to optimize, and then you can look at the data and see actually are people actually liking this. If they're liking it, you should see people clicking through on your link, and you should you should um, see a lot of engagement. So that's what you're looking for. If you when you're determining if you're gonna continue to run it or not, and of course if you've got sales. But. Absolutely. Um, real quick, uh, let's, we've got Kenneth that asked about, yeah, you opened a clothing store before I did my research. Now everyone is saying to stay away from clothing. Is there another niche? Now, Kenneth, if you're going to do any kind of drop shipping from China for the clothing, that's really what we're saying as far as staying away from there because of the sizing. Um, however, if you do print on demand for clothing, um, it just depends on which kind of a niche you're going towards. So if you're looking at um, people who like a particular t uh, breed of dog or a cat or, um, you know, a, another like a yoga store or something that it, they're very passionate, teachers, police officers, um, that you're going to have on your shirts or hats or even shoes, um, there's different print-on-demand companies that you can go with, um, not necessarily to stay away from clothing, um, just on AliExpress yeah. because of the sizing <clears throat> and even sometimes the quality. Quality as well, quality. yeah. The quality can be really bad mm -hmm. as well when you're buying cheap clothing from China. Mm -hmm. But but if you go with print on demand companies, yeah, you can definitely, if you, and um, yeah, I mean, when you're selling print on demand, you, of course, you need to come up with your own design for your for your clothes that's mm -hmm. going to be printed on your, on your on your shirts and whatever you're selling. But uh, yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely a, the best way to start with if you want to sell clothes or uh, start start selling your own print on demand products with your own mm -hmm. designs. You can sell leggings, you can sell shoes, you can mm -hmm. sell phone cases, you can sell necklaces, you can sell hats, mugs, t-shirts. You yeah, you, you're not. L there are a lot of different uh, type product types you can 
do print on demand with. So just do some research, and you, there are some companies that you can find that s provide all those products. So absolutely, Elaine would like to know: um, Does your shipping and handling charges vary, and how do you determine if your shipping charges are too much? We have never have more than nine ninety five on shipping and handling. So uh, shipping and handling nine ninety five is very common for drop shipping. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you're drop shipping from China, but but what also what I do and what most people do that do drop shipping uh, is that they increase the shipping rate if someone want to purchase two. So shipping and handling for two items for, with free plus shipping uh, is basically going to be higher than just 995. So for one item is 995, but for two items we raise the shipping and handling cost to 1795 or 1895 or something like that. So that's where you will make more money, you take in more money when you are uh, mm -hmm. basically for, for shipping and handling when you're selling more items. Yeah, and even what I found with the shipping is is that I'm um, just testing it and seeing which which one your particular niche that those people are willing to pay because I've yeah. some of them I've done 9.95 and the ban and card, ban and card, ban and card, or even at 11.95. They'll ban a car, but you go right in the middle, go to 1095 or even all the way down to 895. It just, yeah. it's all, just keep testing and seeing what one is continuously converting. Yeah, just just lowering the shipping and handling price with $1 will give you a lot more conversions in a lot of the cases. But but you also, of course, if you, if you lower it from 995 to 895 and you get a lot more conversions, you also, of course, need to make sure that you're still making profit or at least breaking even on that product. Mm -hmm. So you're not losing money. So because Absolutely. you will get more conversions, but you also get less profit if you're lowering the price. So yes, yeah, agreed. Um, this is something that you've even spoke on. Um, Stephen has a question in regards to even yesterday's um, presentation that um, Chris and Peter did on print on demand on canvases, and how much or how do you match the photograph with the canvas company and how do you merge? That would really depend on the on the POD company that you go with. Um, do you know more on the print on demand on the canvases <laughs> on how you match that up? Uh, what well, what right do you here. mean by matching? Do you match up the photograph, photograph with, with the, the canvas, canvas company? company? And well, you would add the image to the actual canvas. Um, when you when you go with a lot of the print on demand companies, you're yeah. able to integrate that into your Shopify store and then upload the image um, even before any of your customers see it. Yeah. And you can see exactly what it looks like. Yeah. The uh, the uh, they will actually make a mock up. The print on demand companies will make a mock up mm -hmm. of the product with your image on it when you upload the image, so you can actually see what it what it's going to look like when it's uh, on there. On that that item, so or that shirt or whatever it is. So definitely, this is different for different print on demand companies. But the, some of the companies out there, for example, like Viral Style or T Launch or something like that, is uh, they are two two print on demand companies that print mm -hmm. T-shirts, for example, mm -hmm. and other things as well. So you can go and look the, look them up. They have apps. If you go into a Shopify App Store and and search for print on demand or or T-shirts or something like that in, in there, you will definitely find. Some apps from different vendor, uh, different print on, print on demand companies that you can then you can go and look them up on um, their website and see what mm -hmm. they're actually selling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, Simone has a question on. Um, I have a few ads running since four weeks ago, but something is not working, or I might have didn't set up something correctly that I don't get any results. Is there any recommendations? So it, really, I would start to look at your data and see um, if, if you're not getting any results, then I would definitely turn those off typically yeah. before four weeks. Yeah, four um, weeks is, is a little bit too long to, I, I wouldn't recommend you running the ads, an ad for four weeks if you're not making any sales. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would, like I said, test my ad for three or four days, $5 a day, and see if I'm getting engagement and maybe a sale or two, but if I don't get any sales within three or four days or if I, for, for a cheap product or a low price product, um, then, then I definitely turn them off, pause them and, and look at the data and see if I can make any changes and, and, and try another type of ad or something like that to a different mm -hmm. audience or something. But don't run it for too long. That's, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're running a free plus shipping offer, run it for three or four days. If you're running a retail priced item and you, uh, an ad for a retail priced item, 
then you know your your markup, your your profit margin basically on that of that item. So don't spend more than like I would say more, not more than two times the markup or maybe twenty twenty five dollars if if the markup is very low. But you can allow yourself to spend twenty twenty five dollars for a retail priced item to see if you can get engagement enough, and then you determine if you're going to run it for another few days if you have enough have good engagement and good. So just if you just try it for a little longer to see if you can get the sale, but don't run it for for a lot longer if you're not making any sales. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great advice. Um, and then Adula, you had asked um, why doesn't Shopify accept debit cards for a monthly renewal? Um, you, I would contact Shopify in regards to that. I, yeah, and it's, that's a question for Shopify. Yeah. They have great customer support, so, Fantastic. so so contact them and ask them about that. Uh, that's not the, yeah, that's a technical question or a payment related question, so. Mm -hmm. In a PPP ad, if the relevant score is eight for the audience and the engagement cost is 10 cents to 15 cents, should I change the audience? If so, what is the size for the audience the PPP recommended? So, um, I would recommend, go ahead. I would recommend an audience of one to five million for, to start out for PPE ad, mm -hmm. if you can find that big of an audience. If you're in a smaller niche, you might not be able to find that, then go with whatever size you can get. but. But uh, yeah, if, if you can get to between one and five million people in your audience, then, then you should be definitely be, be a good enough size. Uh, what was the other question? So uh, yeah, the fif size. 50, 15 cents per engagement is uh, too high. So there mm -hmm. is something, something there that you want to change. Either it's the, the ad itself, it might not be compelling enough or the product might not be compelling enough for them to click or the audience, you might need to find a better, better audience for that product. So, what is the highest that you have gone for a, a PPP? I mean, for myself, I've done about seven, uh, seven cents, is the highest. Yeah, I, I, I try to to not go over five cents per mm -hmm. click for sure, and and I want to. I mean, I only run PPP ads in the beginning of, of my campaign as well, to just to bring up the engagement, so for the, because the purpose is to bring up the engagement and not just ma not make sales mm -hmm. necessarily. So. Uh, and I run it for a few days and look at the data and see if I get uh, how much the cost of my, the engagement is. And if it's too high, I turn it off quickly. And if it's if it's good, I let it run for a little longer uh, so that I can get more likes and shares and stuff like that. But mostly, you're going to get likes. And also, when it comes to likes and comments and shares, um, you, from a PPE ad, you will get a lot of likes, not necessarily as many shares and comments, though. So the, the likes are the most most common from a PPE ad. And, and, but they're serving well as social proof that people are actually liking your, your mm -hmm. items. So when other people see your ad and they see that it has a lot of likes, they get more intrigued and see why, why is this product having so many likes? And they will look into it more and, and yeah. Absolutely. Okay, um, looks like we're almost at an hour. Yeah, we're almost at an hour. So, so. we're going to go through here and just answer a few more um, yep. questions here. And let's see here. If there are any, I've, there's a couple of questions in here in regards to payments and Shopify and PayPal limitations, um, including Stripe. I would rec we would recommend contacting Shopify mm -hmm. um, in regards to how much are those percentages and um, the currencies based on your country. Um, let's see here. Yeah, that's not not something we can control. So that's uh, that's you have to co contact them to ask about those questions. Okay, let's see here. Assistant finding products and vendors can assist me. Okay, Carl, um, I need assistance finding products vendors to sell. Assistance in finding product yeah. vendors to sell. So um, if you're Going the route of drop shipping from AliExpress, there, I would start searching on AliExpress for products that are, well, for, for keywords in my niche for related to what I want to sell. Mm -hmm. If I want to sell cat necklace, I would search for cat necklaces in uh, in AliExpress, and then I, the results. I would look at the results first. I would look at the most relevant results and see if there is something there that stands out that has a lot of sales already on AliExpress because if it has a lot of orders in AliExpress, I, I know that a lot of people are liking it. So that's a good sign to start with. Uh, and then I also sort my results, my search results by the number of orders. And, and uh, then you get the highest first and the most best selling first, the best selling cat necklace will come up first and so on. So then I can see what's actually selling, what actually people are liking. And then that's how I usually 
look for, go and look and find my vendors. I go into AliExpress and do searches, and then I might contact the, that vendor that's selling a particular necklace and mm -hmm. ask them about the product and, and their shipping and so on and, and build a relationship with them. Uh, that's what I would recommend to start to, fi to, to find vendors on AliExpress. Start, start there. Uh, that's the easiest way for, to get going and find vendors. I don't think I'm seeing any. Um, on Facebook ads, after you create an ad, Facebook wants you to boost the post. Do you suggest boosting the post or just let it run for the $5 a day? My recommendation is to let it run the $5 a day, um, not to go on the actual page and boost the no, post from no. there. Don't boost the post where, where Facebook recommends. That's uh, most of the time it's a waste of money. Uh, Facebook is going to take your money and, and show it to whoever they like, uh, basically within a mm -hmm. keyword that you choose and, or whatever. But instead, go and create an ad for that post instead of $5 a day ad that's, and target the people that you actually want to target with that ad. That's going to be, you're going to get a lot more work out of your money. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and then Mark has a question on regards to testing products. Do you advise to do you advise to test one product on more audiences, or do you think it is better to test more products on one audience? Um, I would recommend testing. Um, you know, this is something that we even were speaking about in regards to the entrepreneurs. Is you know, do one ad a day, and so you can do that one ad with one audience. See if that one works, and then you can, if that ad works, then you can go ahead and start even multiple ad sets, or take one product and break it out into five ad sets and do that for the entire week, um, and set it at a five dollar a day budget it is, um, for each one. But mm -hmm. yeah, go it's good to test a, a product with multiple audiences mm -hmm. because some audiences are more responsive than others, and. And if you have a product that you you know is selling well for others, or you know that it's selling, or you know have seen that it's popular on AliExpress or or something like that, then you know people are there are people that are interested in it. You just need to find those people, and testing multiple audiences is then a good way. In, when, but of course, if if you can't find an audience match with that like your product, if you're testing three or four or five audiences, then try go ahead and try a different product. But then try to stay maybe in the same niche and try another product within those and try those five audiences mm -hmm. with another product that they might be a better match to. Yeah. That's what I would go and and Absolutely. a key to to becoming successful with Facebook advertising and, and Shopify is to continuously launch ads day day by day, launch mm -hmm. new ads, even if it is for a duplicate ad for an ad set that's already running or if you want to uh, test a new audience or if you're launching an ad for a new product, a completely new niche or whatever. Always get into the habit of launching ads because that's one again is one what's gonna take you to success the fastest, being consistent with that. And mm -hmm. um, that's been that's if you ask anyone who is very successful, they are launching ads all the time to find winning products because a lot of your ads are not not gonna work. That's just how it is, reality. A lot of your ads are not gonna perform. That's for me as well. I mean, in the beginning, maybe one out of ten. Uh, of your ads will will work and give you, make your sales as you get better. Maybe two out of ten or three out of ten, yeah. but always I, I've seen the majority of ads are going to fail, and they fail for me. Any successful per person that is successful with Shopify, ask them. They have a ton of failed ads, a lot more failed ads than ads that are actually successful. So be be, but when you find that winner, that's that product that's selling well, they will make up for all the losses from those tests of the. All right, we're back. back. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, try definitely try to try to launch ads uh, every day. That's my my biggest tip, yeah. uh, and to become successful with it. And even if it's five dollar a day ad, if you can launch one five dollar a day ad every day, and then turn it off after three days if it's not working, and three or four days, and uh, you launch another ad the next day and let it run for three four days and see if, how it's working. For, try different audiences and different products and. You'll find a winner within a few weeks if you do that, most of the, most likely. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing it the way we're teaching. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to do one more question here. And I think this brings up a really great point in regards to Instagram mm -hmm. versus Facebook. And Jen Mark Nielsen, <laughs> he, 
I noticed that um, when I run my ads that most of them are showing up on Instagram and not on Facebook. What is the cause and should I th run them separately? Yes, absolutely run them separately. Um, Instagram is really all about the, the pictures. So, um, and Facebook is also about the images as well as a lot of the content in it. Um, so, yeah. where... Go ahead. The audience on Instagram and Facebook, they are, they are different too. The people that are on, on Instagram are more interested in the pictures and the, they're more maybe fashion or art artists or fashion oriented people. Mm -hmm. So, the, and they like images a lot more than people. And, and Facebook, everyone almost is on Facebook, but not everyone is on Instagram. So there are different demographics. So definitely separate them. Uh, don't run them together because you will get a lot of vis uh, views on the Instagram that the Instagram ads needs to be a little bit different. Tar uh, yeah, crafted a little bit differently than the Facebook ads as well to work well, I think. And so. Absolutely. Yep, I agree with that. Um, I'll answer this very last one because I've noticed mm -hmm. a lot of people bringing up Gearbubble. Um, Gearbubble, Raphael, is a print-on-demand company that you can integrate into your Shopify store. Yep. Um, and you can actually have a set on their, on their platform um, that um, you put your own images on their products and they'll print it and ship it out for you. So it doesn't necessarily work exactly like AliExpress. AliExpress you're using as a drop shipper. You take their products, plug them into your store, and um, and then you go back to their site and order it. Whereas Gearbubble or even Printful or Viral Style um, Interest Print are all going to print your images on the products and ship them on out for you. So. Um, you still have the products yes. in your store, so the cu mm -hmm. your customers will see them yes. in your store. But when when you, you when you get an order of the print on demand products, yep. you basically turn around to your supply your print on demand company and tell them to print that product and ship it out to your customer. Mm -hmm. Instead of if you're getting an order from a drop shipping product that you get from AliExpress, you turn around to your vendor in AliExpress and say, "Hey, I want to order this item for this customer, so ship it out to my customer." Yep, yeah. absolutely. All right, well, guys, these have all been really great questions yeah, today. Thank you. Hopefully, it's been of value to you guys. Um, and um, good luck on this uh, 90 day challenge. You all are doing so fantastic, and the group has been really growing. And we appreciate you all being on today. Yeah, we certainly do. And uh, see you all in the group. All right. Have a nice day. Have a great day. Great day.